Let me tell this story real quick. I've always loved flowers since I was a child. I'm from Columbus, and I have a friend in here who, who's from Columbus, too. And uh, the first thing I did was become a flower show judge 100 years ago before the flood. And once I became that, I thought, well, ooh, I really should be in some of these plant societies. So I became a daffodil judge, and I have over 1,000 daffodils in my yard, although they're full of weeds right now. They need dividing. And then I thought, well, my parents always had camellias. Why don't I do camellias, too? You know? So I got finally my last thing right before I retired was to become a camellia show judge because there was the, Sama the Savannah Camellia Society down here. Well, guess what? The minute I became a fully accredited judge, they disbanded it 10 years ago. So I had no place to go to judge shows or inner shows. Plus I didn't have, of course I've got really all of Georgia and the Southeast now, but I also didn't have a society to belong to. But in the meantime, one of my good friends named Sam Welburn, and some of you may know him from Columbus, he reformed the Columbus, the Chattahoochee Valley Camellia Society. So that was something I could belong to. You have to belong to a local society to be a judge. But anyway, I went from there, and what I'm going to do is tell you all a few things. I'm just so excited we have this many people here. It's just wonderful. And I've always known, I married a boy from over on this side of, of, of the state and live in Swainsboro, and I've always known that Savannah had gorgeous camellias. You know, I, Judge Solomon, everybody knew about him. And of course, the Poos have his house now. And also, I'll know that in Bluffton and all up and down oh, over there near the May River and everything, they grow beautiful camellias. So I just couldn't wait. I felt like Swainsboro was just a little inland. And then I discovered we have lots of homes with beautiful camellias. So I decided I'd just try to learn what I could and be a judge. And what I want to tell y'all is I want everybody to bring their blooms. If you don't even know what you have in your yard, Gene is going to be here. We're hoping we'll have this man from Charleston. Can't think of his name. Miles Peake. Yeah, I bought one of his books today. But anyway, and I'll be, I don't know a lot. I, there are thousands of camellias, but I know a few. But bring them <coughs> if you don't know them. I want you to end your blooms, and I want you to win a blue ribbon. And I can remember the first time I ever entered a camellia show. I drove them all the way over to Massey Lane by myself. Had no idea how to display them or anything. And didn't know if they were good blooms or not, and I was just petrified. So I'm going to give you a few tips before you bring your blooms. And I won't talk too long. I told Jean, hopefully it won't last more than five, ten minutes. First of all, you should be looking in your garden already and see it. What do you have that's going to bloom? Be sure that you just bud it. When you go out in your yard and you see three buds like that, what are you supposed to do? What I do is I just pop <coughs> two of them off like that. And then, and you should have done them earlier. <laughs> I just went out and got, I think this is uh, Fashion Mala. It always has lots of buds. Yeah. Um, behind each bud is this little, what do they call that, a growth bud? What is that thing? Behind it is a little growth bud. And uh, Dr. Fu talked about, I was not here the last time, but he talked about how you can jib it with the gibberellic acid and it'll bloom five to six weeks ahead of time. Hopefully, it should. Gene was just, I said, you mean if I do mine next week, which I haven't done mine, I'll have something to show you. He said, you should have. <laughs> so anyway, uh, do that. Go out in your yard and, and do two on each bush. If you, you know, I don't know how many you want to start with. I'm not a big grower. I only bring about maybe 12 to the show. But anyway, and you keep watching them. And what you want to do if you have a leaf growing over one of them, you want to pick that leaf off. If you go out there and you see a lot of pine straw on them, carefully take the pine straw off because petals of camellias are very fragile. I asked Gene if he had any to show. He said, I don't think so. But look, y'all, these beautiful blooms that he brought me. And I want y'all to come up afterwards and look at how pretty they are. Okay, so now you've looked at your, you've looked at your yard you jib your flowers, and then you wait about six weeks, and hopefully that'll be the time for the show. So I'm gonna read what I've written down. I wrote this down a couple of days ago, so let's see what I put down. All right, I would cut mine. I don't know if you're in Savannah, you might can wait and cut them in the morning. Camellia's open in the dark. They're the only plant I know, maybe besides tobacco that opens at night. 
oh, I know that you can go out and you have a bud at night and the next morning it's a beautiful bloom in the morning. So I, I would probably cut mine the day before the show because you want to condition them. You want to put them in some water. You want to bring them, cut them in the garden and then get you some water and get you a base or a cup and put the water in it. Recut them when you come in again and put them in oh, the base. What I would do is I would leave several nice leaves on it. I read in the new handbook right before I came, I think God meant for me to read it. Almost every flower show I've ever entered in, you have to have two leaves. They don't necessarily have to be the leaf on that camellia blossom. They can be two good looking leaves from another plant that look in scale with that camellia blossom that you cut. I did read though in the new rules that the different clubs vote on whether or not they would like to have uh, leaves on their blooms. And I started looking at some pictures of some old shows I've judged, and you know, a lot of them exhibit them without the leaves on them. So it's just up to this club what we want to do. It used to be an old rule that you had to have two, two leaves on them. Be sure when you get your leaf, you clean it off real good. And I carry with me a little kit, and in the kit, I have all sorts of tools. You're gonna to see something more professional than me talking in a minute. You're gonna see a PowerPoint, and I hope that some of this stuff is in it. This is just stuff I concocted myself by trial and error. I always carry Q-tips and cotton balls so that I can wash the leaves off, and I always carry a bottle of water, so you wanna wash the, and they're very durable, you know, leaves. And don't wash your petals off. You could probably hold your camellia very gently under a spray, or you could mist them, but they're very fragile. Now daffodils are exactly different. You can just run them under the faucet and nothing hurts them. So be very careful with those. And then I also blow on mine. Some people say bring canned air, like you clean your computers with, or your keyboard. But canned air is much too powerful and it can sometimes blow off the petals, so you don't want that to happen. I also carry cuticle scissors and I carry tweezers with me because you're gonna see an ant or something, a little a fleck of dirt on them. <laughs> and let me tell you something, you can have a gorgeous bloom and the judge is looking at it and right next to it is another gorgeous bloom, but that one next to it has a little speck of dirt on it. Well, guess which one's gonna win the bloom? Mm -hmm. The one with no dirt. I will say this about camellias. You don't have to have a perfect camellia to win a blue ribbon. Camellias are so fragile, and it depends on the season, the area you're in, and that kind of thing. The aim is for the perfect bloom, and the most perfect bloom is going to win the show. But if you're in an area where you've had a horrible storm, like we had, what, 10 days ago or two weeks ago, you're gonna have a lot of bruised, I see Betty Walla from Springfield, I know you have a lot of bruised camellias, and so pick the least bruised camellia you have. I mean, don't, don't think just because it has a brown spot on it that you can't bring it. You don't want a huge brown spot. You don't want it to take up 95% of your bloom. But if there's a little one on there, go ahead and bring it anyway. Sometimes you might not have any competition. You might win the bloom anyway. So, I mean, you know, there's always stuff like that. All right, let's see. I did put two leaves. I did put two leaves. So if you're going to enter it, say, and I didn't have any like Jean did in my yard. I had this little bush called early autumn. It has never bloomed, I was telling Dr. Pooh. It's never bloomed this early. It usually blooms the first of November. And I've been watching this bud, but the ants have been watching it too. So they had started eating the little petals on the side, but it did open up yesterday. But what you wanna do is when you enter the show, you want to put it in the cups. They're gonna give you a cup that will fit the size of bloom you have. This is too big. I emailed Jean, I said, Jean, I can't find any four ounce cups in Swainsboro. And he said, don't worry about that, we're gonna get cups, you know. So anyway, this is where, they're gonna give you a tray. I see Jean brought one. They're gonna give you a tray and they're gonna be filled with probably me and everybody else, all the volunteers will be filling them with cups of water. And you're gonna come in with your blooms and then you're going to uh, put your blooms in there with your two leaves if we decide, with no leaves if we decide. There'll also be miniature cups and there'll be large size ones that you jib, uh, like Frank Hauser, which is a huge one that grows so beautifully. 
Okay, let me see, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, I want to tell you about these cards. Junior said he had already ordered them. You're going to have a, an entry card. And don't panic when you see it, because if you're a first time in a, how many of y'all have ever entered in a Camellia show? Okay, so you know how to do it. I'm not talking to the, to the choir there. All right, what I do is, and so does everybody else I know that's in the business or in the, the hobby, is you use these little stickers with your name on them. And so on a card, you always have the top and the bottom. You have to put your address and your name on them because you want to get credit for it if you get a blue ribbon. Now, if you know the name of your Camellia, hopefully you've kept your tags. If you don't, you'll just have to wait till you get here and somebody like Gene will help you figure out what it is. But I will say this, there are thousands of Camellias and no judge can possibly know the name of all Camellias. Now, there are a lot of them like Gene that probably, he, he's been in it forever. I may know a few, but I don't know that many. So you can take a chance. If you think you know your grandmama called it this, go ahead and put it on there. Then you'll get the book when you get here and, and you'll look at your schedule. Everybody, I didn't know Jean was gonna have a schedule, so I put on your table a Flint River Energies thing, and it tells you unprotected, protected, whether they're japonicas, whether they're hybrids, whether they're uh, reticulatas, whether they're non-hybrid reticulatas, they're all kinds. And if you have a lot of new camellias, you're probably gonna have some hybrids, Jean, when you say you're gonna have some reticulatas. If you have a lot of heirloom camellias, they're probably going to be J japonicas, I would think. They're all different kinds, but what this tag says on it is what, and they'll help you fill it out, because I know the first time I entered, I had no idea what mine was. This is, this one was a Magnolia Floria, Floria. I'm so sure if you have that, it's called Purple Dawn. It's really pretty, it opens, it's a, it's a formal double. Anyway, you, you go ahead and you mark whether you chemically treated it. If you jibbed it, you've chemically treated it. And then you look in the book, or they'll look for you, and they'll tell you whether it's a minor to a small, medium, medium, large, and you mark that. You do the same on the bottom, and that's all there is to it. And then there'll be some of us sit there to take it and place it in the place it's supposed to be on the tables. Now, is there anything else I did not mention, Gene? I will show you this, and Gene didn't put his out. This is the book that they'll be using at classification and they'll look up ones that they don't know. Some of them they'll know immediately. This is one called, this supplement is interesting because it's full of old, old ones. And a lot of, I didn't have this when I first judged, but there's one called Aunt Jetty. You know that old one that's a big bush. Anyway, um, no one knew the name of it and it's in here. So any old ones you have, the name of them might be in this one. I'd say, Go ahead and try to look online on the American Camellia Society website. There's an encyclopedia. And you do like me. I have been hunting for a name so long. I have started with A's. I've looked at every picture under A's and I've gone all the way to Z's. So and that took me a long time. <laughs> and then even then you might be wrong. But you might get a panel of judges that they don't know for sure either. <laughs> so why not take a chance? Okay. I do have a couple of books up here. Which y'all might want to look at. I will say this, everything I'm saying, and I think I said this the first time I joined this committee, the best Camellia garden field guide ever written is by the Mobile Camellia Society. It is wonderful. And most of what I'm telling you right now, I got from it. I kind of figured out a lot of it by myself because I didn't have any place to go and learn it except to teach it to myself. So is there anything, oh, and also I always carry flippers with you. You know, going out the door, you might see a gorgeous one right down underneath you didn't see, and you just clip it and bring it on. Does anybody have any questions? Then I'm gonna let y'all see the PowerPoint, which is by, I think, Carol and Jerry Self, is that right? And they're from down below Quitman, and I've been to their place, and it's just fabulous, and they just grow hundreds of camellias. They're so pretty. Does anybody have any questions? You got these blooms in little tubes that you got from the floor. Oh, I forgot. Now, would you show I, that? Would that be in the show? I'm so glad that you told me. No, let's carry them there. You made me almost forget. Since I'm not a big grower, I don't carry a lot of camellias. But you're going to see at this show because they're people that this is their life's blood. They just love it, don't they? Jim? They spend their life to exhibit 
growing exhibit maize. And they're wonderful. And they're so, if you've ever met anybody who's a gardener, they're a good person. They're wonderful people. Get you a styrofoam box if you have more than six. In the box, put you some chillers like you put in your coolers if you're going to tailgate somewhere. Then go to Walmart or quilting place and buy you some batting. And then get your little tubes. Fill them with water. After you've conditioned your camellia, then you put, put them in here. And then if you put these little tubes down in here, they won't go anywhere. They'll just sit in there and you want them to sit on the top. The minute you get them in there, what you want to do is you want to cover the top of it because it will start to cool down. You don't want it to um, get so cold and so damp. Now, if you have a lot of them, Jean may know this, that you'll see these people that bring them. If they bring 25 at a time, sometimes they might have to put a piece of uh, saran wrap kind of over the top so the condensation won't come in there from the chiller, you know, melting in the bottom. Uh, but hopefully Carol and Jerry are going to show us some better way. This is this is all just what I figured out of my own. What is the white cooler that you use? It's, you know that batting you get a long time ago people used to make quilts? It's batting, but it's not cotton anymore, y'all. That was a disappointment. It's all polyester. I don't think they make cotton batting. If, if they do, I didn't see it at Walmart. What do you mean by Ma'am? Um, okay, all you do is cut them, cut them in the morning. A lot of flowers you can cut in the evening, but in the morning a flower has more sugar glucose in it than it does any other time of the day. Never cut them in the middle of the day. I mean, they'll wilt in the middle, any kind, just about. If you have a regular flower show, you'll just ruin yourself if you cut in the middle of the day. Oh, cut them with an angle because you don't want that stem to go flat to the bottom of whatever you've got it in because it won't take up any water. Then bring them in. I usually carry a basket with me and I lay them down. I put paper towels and I lay them out down on the basket. And I, I never bring but about six in. I run myself to death running back and forth because out of that six, I may throw them all away but one. But bring it inside and then recut them again. And I always have my water already ready I have a lot of little teeny bud vases like all over my house. And you know, they're the little clear cheap ones that you used to buy at the dime stores, but we don't have any dime stores anymore. So I don't know where you get them. The florist probably could order them. And I bring them in. The water's already ready. It's already gotten room temperature. And then I just start recutting them and put them in there. And you keep them in a, in a shaded place that's not hot, not in the direct sun and you don't want them any kind of a draft, anything blowing on it like a fan or an AC vent or anything like that. And by the next morning, they've taken up a lot of water and they sometimes they look better in the morning than they do when you pick them. I don't know why, how that happens, but uh, I'm trying to think what else. A lot of people that are really avid recut it again that day before they take it to the show, but you know, that's three times. That's just too much work. This is supposed to be a hobby. <laughs> so, anyway, if anything else, I hope this helped y'all just a little bit. Just to see something like that is kind of... Do you add anything to your room temperature water? No, but you can. Uh, you can add something like floral life that you get from the, from the florist. Pretty much in camellias, you can add some things. As long as the judges can't tell you added it. <laughs> uh, is, see, in flower show judging, you can't add anything. Betty knows you can't paint, you can't, you know, you can't add that stuff that florists use if they're having a big wedding, they spray all of the things, you can't do that. Or it, if they can figure out it's there, you've made a big boo-boo. But in camellias, you can add, some, a lot of people add like Sprite, or they put an aspirin in the bottle. Does an aspirin have sugar in it? I don't know. But anyway, I don't do anything because I try to, I try to show mine at least 24 hours after I pick them. And I, if they've lasted that long, that's fine. They're not gonna be for, you know, you for me to enjoy. You clean the leaves, you just clean with water. What? Cleaning the leaves, you just clean with water. Plain water, plain room temperature water in the cotton ball. And let me tell you something, if you've got scale on the back, you can rub like heck, you get that scale out. It's a little bitty teeny bug, but it'll come out. <laughs> Also, if you have mildew, you know how white will be on the back, back? That's the beginning of scale, isn't it, mildew? I don't know. You can rub that out, too. 
you can cover up a lot of things. You know, just ask me in private. You can even take a little, uh, <laughs> what do you call those markers that the kids use? A little one and you can feel like a little hoe. With that. And if, it's, if it's not obvious, you can get by with it. So anyway, you can, you know, it's like cosmetics on a lady. She looks a lot better with lipstick on than she does with that. <laughs> so. Question about the condition of the leaves. Now, I, 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 um, the scale you, you can get rid of, but how about like if part of the leaves has been eaten, or a lot of years have had insects uh, uh, eating on the leaves? If there's any way you can get any better leaves, and since you can get by in camellias with cutting leaves from another plant, I just hunt around for some that look good. Okay. I have a problem, so I told you. It doesn't have to be attached to the flowers. Yeah, it does not have to be attached, but you don't, what you want to do is you want to put your bloom right on top of those two leaves. But as I say, Jean and them, I don't think they've even decided whether we're going to have leaves or not, have you? Yeah, we're going to have leaves. Okay, good. All right, so now you know, just put it right down on top of it. Just make mm -hmm. sure that your stem is getting water and that the leaf stem is getting water. They'll last, though. Camellia leaves that last at least 48 hours. Out of, but, not, but the bloom one. all genius. Anybody else think of anything else? And y'all can look at all my stuff and look at all of Jean's beautiful comedies up here. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Uh, we're going to hope in just a minute that, um, that our PowerPoint works. So we went through a lot trying to get this on. It was long distance. The girl that was going to do it, she was in Disney World. So she was conference calling the candidate in the office to try to get it all hooked up. So, you know, that was kind of fun. But we got it up there and we think it's going to work. Add something to what Paula said about what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Hewlin Smith in Valdosta was the big show guy that I knew. And he used to say, there's two kinds of uh, comedia showers. There's winners, there's, there's losers, and cheaters. And so, any way you can cheat, that was his idea to get it in there a little bit better. Um, before I get into this, I'm going to read you something that was printed in the Savannah Morning News on February the 2nd, 1969. So that's been a while back. Scotty Forbes, that took care of the Diamond Garden, he had given this to the Savannah Morning News. And this is what he said. The funniest incident I ever experienced was at an important camellia show in Augusta. Flowers came in all the way from Charleston to Mobile. The entries were received in the basement of the bank building where the show was going to be held. In the old days, shows were almost always held in banks, so you know that. And uh, he said, when I arrived, there were boxes and boxes of blooms everywhere, on tables, floors, shelves, a lady came in the basement door, she stumbled, and then she stepped into one of the boxes. <laughs> the slipping, and it started, and the, this slipped, and it started an avalanche. The boxes skidded, knocked over each other, pushed table legs around, which dumped the contents onto the floor in chaos. There were blooms all over. Fifty owners almost had heart attacks. <laughs> But you know, not one blamed that dear lady. You have never heard such pretense as, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> don't believe that. So if you're a handler, as I've told you before, don't let that happen, right? Um, our program today was done by Jerry and Carol Self, and it came long distance from, they're down on the, uh, a little bit below Valdosta in that area of Quitman. And they're very serious showers. They'll probably take 150 to 200 blooms every week to a show. And they'll bring that to here to this show when they come. And so um, 
So they really know what they're doing. So let's see if we can make this A hey, yeah, good. And so basically they're talking about why you should bring blooms to your own show, you know. Um, there'll be a lot of beautiful blooms by professional growers and by professional, we're talking about the people that show on a regular basis like Carol and Jerry. Um, but there's also going to be a lot of uh, varieties uh, that local people are going to bring in and we are going to have a local competition. So you don't have to put it in the big stream and compete with the big boys. You can have your local where you're competing against the local people. Um, and um, I think that it's just going to be a lot more fun um, when you can bring some of your blooms and put them in the show. It's sort of like you can just sort of try it out and see how it's going to work. Okay, now that I have jibbed my buds, what's this next step? And so let's check out some of the rules. And so what they used was part of our original schedule. Now it's changed a little bit because we've gone through different drafts of it right there. But, um, but basically it's showing the dates and, and the time when we're gonna be starting. Okay, any individual may exhibit in entries must be from plants owned by and in the possession of an exhibitor for at least 30 days. Um, and the exhibitor does not have to be a member of the Camellia Society. So, if our show is going to be on, what's the actual date that Friday? How are you got 17th. it? 17th. 17th, okay, that's the 17th of November. That means that if you go out and buy a Camellia, you need to have bought that before the 17th of October. So just keep that in mind. It can be one that you've already had, but if you go and get um, a new plant, you want to exhibit flowers off of it, you need to have it at least 30 days. And you don't have to be a member of this group, but we certainly would hope that you would be, especially when it's all done. All right, now they've got in here that entries will be received at 7.30, and it'll go from 7.30 to 10.30 on Friday. Originally, we thought that that would give volunteers a little more time to come in until Chief Judge Gary Surface in Santee saw it and was like, no, don't do that. People want to come in early. And so we will actually have some of the big players like the selves that will probably be coming in here between 6.30 and 7 with 150 to 200 blooms. They've got a lot of work that they've got to do to get this thing going on. And the other thing I'll tell you is the show chairman, don't show up at 10.30 with your blooms. You know, because at that point in time, I gotta say, I'm sorry, there's no room in the end for you, you know. And so just get enough time to do that. Um, and it says rule number 13, um, education will be accordance to the Camellia nomenclature. Um, that's the book that Paula showed you. Everything is based on the Southern California nomenclature book. Other than basically the miniature class, the judges are going to be looking for size. I mean, I don't care. They're supposed to be looking at it in the nomenclature, what the size the bloom is supposed to be. But if a flower is supposed to be a medium, let's say a three to four inch, and it's been jibbed, and it's actually a very large, the judges are gonna have a tendency to pull that in and give it the medium award. So if you see a really big bloom in a medium class winner, you'll understand that that's how the judges look at it. Because for the judges, size does matter. They like big flowers as a general rule. And here again, um, we're talking about the, the nomenclature. You're going to have japonicas, like Paula was mentioning. Your older varieties, for the most part, are going to be japonicas. But we have hybrids and we have reticulata. And let me explain what that means. Reticulata is a species. And anything that is a hybrid that has reticulata parentage, it doesn't have to be a complete reticulata, it's thrown into this category. And the judges love reticulata. That's just because it's bigger. You know, when you see flowers as big as plates, they're usually reticulated. The hybrids are going to be any hybrid that does not have reticulata species in its parentage. So just to kind of clarify that out a little bit. And then they basically put all the species and sanctuaries and everything into one category. Since we're using a standard schedule, that's 
about what we're doing too on that. All right, and then again, you can look this up in your nomenclature book. Um, if you want to get a nomenclature book, you can go to um, Amazon.com and you can search for the Southern California Chameleon Nomenclature. <coughs> They'll have two versions. One is a printed book like we just showed you, and the other one is a Kindle edition that will work on your iPad. So for about $20, you can get either one. With the Kindle edition on your iPad, you have a search feature. So if, if, if you're good with your iPad, I'd recommend getting the Kindle edition. And if you just want to have something to carry around in the garden and look, the other one would be there. But it'll tell you all the information, basically, that you would need to know about that flower and what you need to put it on your car when you fill it out. All right, now to fill out the placement card for our large, this is called Auntie Annie T. Now that's not a variety that I'm familiar with, but it's obviously one that they grow. And um, again, you can see a picture of the, the card over there. And you can see that they're doing the same thing where the name, will, you have to put it in twice, at the top and the bottom, and then the card folds up. They're using little um, name and address stickers instead of sitting there and writing it out every single time. So if you're gonna have some, make sure you have your self-addressed uh, stickers to go on there. And um, then you're gonna fill out the basic information that, um, that you're gonna have, the size that's up there. And even if you do all of that, when it comes into classification, the people working classification are gonna double check to make sure that you put the right sizes and things that are in there, but it's good to do it. Once it's done, you're gonna fold the bottom up and it covers up your name. So when the judges are walking around the tables, they got to see that it's your name and they either don't like you or they do like you and give you special treatment. So that's the reason for that. Um, now here's what we're gonna do for our local is that um, uh, you're gonna use the white card. See, we have different colored cards. Now, I did get in touch with the American Camellia Society and they were supposed to send me cards. Well, they sent me a show kit and they didn't send me the cards yet. So, we'll get some. But you'll have different color cards for different classes. The white cards are normally gonna be for any Camellia that's grown outdoors, unprotected, not something of the greenhouse or not something under a shade canopy gives it protection. But for locals, it doesn't matter whether it's a hybrid or whether it's a japonica or it's a sasanqua, you can put it in the local class and you're gonna designate that with a green dot and we will have green dots. Um, these kind of things right here. So when it's folded up and it comes in, all the green dots are gonna go to a table for the local. It makes it simple. So you're competing against basically other local people. Okay. Let's see if it'll go backwards. Okay. We go up. Howard, go see if you can advance it without the I may have to have you sit back there and advance the slide. Stay there a second in here. Um, this is Mrs. Miss Bessie Bevel. That's one of Dr. Homeyer's committees. And what she, they're doing is showing you what they think would be the better bloom. It says the first one is not open enough, and the second one is great, and the third one is flattened out so that it's not fresh enough because the judges want it to be very fresh, but they don't want it to be not open. At the same time, they don't want it to be open too much. It's kind of like Goldilocks. It's just right in the middle, just right in there. All right, let me see if it's... Well, my clicker's not working. Howard's my clicker now. All right, here we go. Here's a formal uh, double pink perfection. Most people know that, and many of you have old gardens don't have that in there. Um, basically, the, the one in the left has not opened up enough, and um, so what they've done is they've taken a Q-tip and they basically have opened up the bloom, and the one on the right is the same flower after they got finishing opening it up, because as 
they told Mike when he was at the show, it's all about presentation. <laughs> okay. Some of your varieties are going to be cup petals, and some of them are going to um, are going to stand out. They're going to kind of flat go outward, and some of them are going to curve inward. So it, it really depends on the variety on that. Um, and this one is um, Hetty Love Wine. Um, both are nice and fresh, but the second one is more open. So that would be the way that they would want to enter. So if you've got a lot of flowers, you're gonna look for these kind of characteristics as far as what is the better bloom to put in the show. The one on the right looks more flat to me. Yeah, and uh, and again, it, that's... that's the previous slide said don't do that. Yeah, but but you know, but again, this is coming from, yeah. from, from them, and it's all subjective to how they think about that right in there. Um, all right, now we're going to the next one. All right, and uh, okay, this is Sweetie Pie Red. Okay, how many people in here think that color is red? I mean, really. That's the name in the nomenclature book, so if you have that, which I would call Sweetie Pie Pink, but it's, it's, they call it red. You still have to put red on the tag because it's in the nomenclature book right there. So the first one is still somewhat cup. However, the second one is open more and it's much larger and the stamens are still bright and yellow, because stamens being bright and yellow is a big thing for judges. So they're saying that the second one would be the one that they would want to enter in. Howard, go ahead. All right, um, this is sand dimensions of variegated. And again, freshness is all the difference, so try to avoid that center hole. Um, the fresh stamens make all the difference. So when you look at the one on the left, um, the stamens are fresher than the one on the right. The one on the right, those, it doesn't even have any pollen that's left. It's all dried out. So you would want to go with the one on the left, basically, if you were entering that room, according to the, the set. All right, now this is uh, Dina J. The first two are too tight, but the last one is still fresh, and it shows off the bloom to its fullest. Um, so when you look at the last one, you're going to see that it's almost like some little petaloids that are down in there that are now showing up as the flower has opened up all the way. But you don't see it on the first two. <coughs> okay, how do I enter a winning bloom in the show? Okay, Howard, go ahead. All right, now we're seeing the same stuff that uh, Paula had in there. It's that fiberish, what, what did you call that stuff? Batting. 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 All right. It's, it's Walmart or any quilt voice has it. Okay. And it says that we try to cut in the morning for freshness. Um, and basically, you know, I've seen people that would have these little flashlights that they put on their heads, you know, and they're out in the garden at dark cutting flowers to go to the show. They're very serious about that. So early in the morning, that's about as early as you can get. Um, and said that they'll use the lid of the cardboard box to fill, the fiber fill, and then we leave an adequate stem with uh, leaves on it. <coughs> Again, this is the first step, and we're going to see more. Um, gently shake off the water droplets uh, before prepping the bloom, and holding the stem near the bloom and being gentle, and notice that with what they're doing, they're wearing gloves. So this is serious, too. Okay, immediately put the bloom stems in a container of water and place under a fan to dry. Do not leave any water droplets on any petal <coughs> to avoid spotting. Remove all but one or two of the leaves. If the bloom is wet, remove them all to help the bloom dry faster. If the leaves are damaged in any way, remove them. So they don't want that flower to be wet at all. They want to they want to get the moisture off, and that's what they're recommending here. I've never used the fan. That's, I guess that's a good idea. I don't have the water spot on it. Yeah. Um, and then they're saying we use either a cup or a pick, and the picks would be what Paul showed you, the little tubes that we had. And then we place on a dry cotton or a cup <coughs> on the table so it will not fall over. Okay? Go to the next one. 
here's the good stuff, the stuff that they, most of the judges are not going to tell you what they do with all that. Um, when the blue blooms are stored in the refrigerator for longer than a day, we give them the dry, absolute no water droplets bloom, a quick spray over on the top of the bloom, including the stamen. It helps to keep the bloom fresher. And keep in mind that these people are going to be cutting blooms at their peak and storing them for a period of time in the refrigerator. They may store them up to 10 days or so. You know, it, they can store them a long time. So this is one of the little secrets that you see right there. And um, once we have uh, completed the home prepping, we put the blooms in water with the floral wipe added. And so that's, I think, what you were talking about, wasn't it, Paul? Mm -hmm. Right there. And then we store the blooms for up to 10 days in the refrigerator. Um, instead of using water, you can stick the stem into a table break. The sugar will keep the flower fresh overnight. And I, I had a friend one time, and he will be at this show. His name is Buck Mizell. And he was, I think he was down from around Louisiana. He's got that Cajun sound. He always say, put the fly in the grape. Put the fly in the grape. He said, put the flower in the grape, what he was saying. You know? But he never, he put them in grapes. And he used to win all the awards. Way he did. still does. Yeah. All right, Howard. Basically, just a note, a small quantity of fluorolyte is available at Walmart. Well, it wasn't available at my Walmart. I went to look and I couldn't find it. If, if you cut your blooms the day before or the morning of the show, the grape is a good option. Um, and remember, you do not want to wait too late to cut your blooms because time flies when you're in the garden and you do not want to miss the bloom entry deadline so that I have to turn you away at 10.45 when you show up with the prize winning bloom. All right, Howard. All right, we pack in sweater boxes with fiber fill, protecting the sides and the tops, and then put an airtight lid on and refrigerate it at 37 degrees. Um, we'll write down the name and variety of the bloom in the numbered box and fill out placement cards by box. And we generally show between 150 and 200 blooms per show. So unless we know what's in each box, we sometimes simply can't remember. I can certainly relate to that. That's a lot of blooms to be trying to figure out. What was this one now? It's bad when you have to get another judge to tell you what your bloom is. All right, we transport the blooms to the shows in the sweater boxes and coolers with the blue eyes. Um, it's fun to show beautiful camellias, and here are a few tips to make your own camellias show off on the table. All right, and this is the tools that they're using. Um, you know, clippers to cut the stem to the right length, tweezers to remove brown stamens, uh, manicure scissors to trim small brown edges, um, Q-tips to remove the pollen from the petals, and um, Glasses. Yeah, glasses. I can't see it in here. To so see what we need. Yeah. So you need all of these tools if you really want to compete with the selves. You know, you see what you're already up to right now against. But um, but they need all of this little stuff here. So go ahead, Howard. And here we go to the uh, the cup dilemma. You're going to have different size cups, and if you go to Walmart. Or you go to Sam's, or you go to even the party stores, they have different size cups. But these show judges are going to want certain size cups. I mean, and they talk about it all the time. I've already got the call from uh, the guy up in Ural, Finland. He was telling me about the specific cups that we needed. And so um, when I go to Columbia, he's going to show us the kinds that they want, and we'll try to get those sides, have a variety. We want the, the judges to be happy. Um, and so we want to have a cross-section of all of them that's going to fit the bloom, and you'll see why as we go to the next slides. Okay, compare the different size cups used for the little slam. And although that looks big, that's a very small flower in real life. Uh, the left is the correct size. However, the right one uh, appears smaller because it has fallen down into the cup. You never want to see any of the rim of the cup. So if you have two 
pick a cup, the flower falls down in it, and it doesn't look right, and that presentation is everything, doesn't show up to the judges. All right, the right size cup, but the stem of the bloom on the left is too long. So it's kind of cattywampus, you know, it's sort of hanging out. It's not settling in like it should be. And they want it to be parallel to the table, and they've got a slide that will show you that in just a minute. All right, use leaves to your advantage. The droopy bloom is in the largest cup available. By placing two leaves under the droopy petals, the bloom appears to be much larger and fresher. So basically, it's the same flower, the same cup, but they've used the leaves to help hold up part of the petals. And it helps to make that presentation look a little bit better in there. Okay, leaves do not have to be attached. Leaves do not have to be of the same variety as the bloom. However, leaves must be chameleon leaves. So you can't put hibiscus leaves in there. That's not going to work. Um, so select pretty foliage without spots or bug bites. Um, no more than two leaves. Um, use two. They seem to be the most attractive at the 10 o'clock and, and 2 o'clock position. So keep that in mind right there. Um, one thing I'll tell you with my friend Hewlin Smith, he thought he had won a show one time because he had the best bloom. And it didn't turn out that way when the judging came. And he went to the chief judge and asked him, he said, I want to know how this bloom beat my bloom. And the ju chief judge said, because the other bloom didn't have a hole in the leaf. <laughs> and so that little difference made all there was. So the next time, Hewlin would get the best leaf on the bush, put it in there with his bloom. He never lost a show because of that. All right, Howard, go ahead. All right, notice how the blooms are all parallel to the table. Judges like that look. So that is an important piece of advice right there, parallel to the table. So when you have the cup sitting here, you want that bloom to be level in that cup with that table. And they actually are going to like it too if you kind of get them in order where they're not all you know, jumbled too. So our placement people will do that. But really, it's how it's sitting in that cup because that's how the judges are looking at it as they walk around the judge. Okay, how will each bloom be judged? There are four characteristics that judges consider. Form, color, condition, and size. All right, form. Uh, bloom formation should be true to the description. Uh, may include smooth or crate petals, uh, petal alignments, serrated or fembriated or, or serrated petals. So each variety in the nomenclature book should have a description of what it's supposed to look like and the judges are going to be matching this to that. Also, the judges know a lot of these flowers and so sometimes they're not judging this flower next to that flower, they're judging the flower based upon what that ideal flower is supposed to look like that's in their brain. And this is interesting. Be cautious of the name of a variety. If it is a methodiana and it has fimbriated petals, the bloom is a mutant that is called flower wood. Notice the petals, how they have fimbriations on them. And so that's the telltale description of a methodiana sport called flower wood. One that does not have fimbriations on the petal is just a basic methodiana. And so if you have fimbriation, then you have a flower wood. If you don't, you have a methodiana. The judges know that, and you will need to know that, or you're going to ask me or Paul or somebody. All right, color. The color should match the one given in the nomenclature. Um, color includes the amount, distribution of variegation, sparkle, sheen, brilliance of the petals on the surface. And so um, when you see variegation in a flower like that, it's a small amount of variegation. When judges are looking at variegation, the amount of white that's in the flower, if you have one that's got a moiré pattern and it's lots of variegation, it will win over a bloom like this every single time. So the more variegation you get, the better the judges are gonna like it. That's, that's generally true. All right, color may be changed when a bloom is jibbed. 
especially the red rose calf, which has a purple calf to it. It is affected more in early season. Um, some judges want to penalize, however, there would not be blooms at early shows without chipping. So the Mavadiana that we just talked about, that could be the flower wood. When you treat that, and especially if the temperatures get cool, it'll turn almost blue. I mean, it's, that's the other name that it's called by purple dawns, is it's like a blue purplish color. And so um, basically it's subjective. Some judges are gonna penalize against it, some won't. Depends on what mood they're in and whether they even like the flower. All right, condition. Freshness is indicated by color and appearance of stamens. Um, petals and leaves should be free of insect bites and disease, injury, discoloration, or other distractors. They want it to be exactly right. And there's something I see on one of those petals right there in the front. So if you have something like that, you want to take your little Q-tip or your tweezers and get it off before you send it into the show. All right, size. When the size is given in the nomenclature, it refers to the blooms grown outdoors and not chemically treated. So big is almost always a plus, and again, the exception would be for the miniatures. The bigger, the better, as far as the judges are concerned. If you've got a really perfect bloom and your neighbor's got a perfect bloom, but yours is bigger, you will win. That's how they work. All right, she says that Jerry and I have found it most helpful to have a table set up at the show to assist local exhibitors with their blooms, and we talked about that. That's really critical. Um, you're going to need to know the name of each variety that you exhibit to fill out the placement card completely and correctly. Only ask professional judges for help after they have entered all their blooms in the show. So if you see judges out there and they're still putting their blooms in, don't go knocking and say, can you look at this? Wait till they're finished. That's really what they're doing. I'm sure they've had a lot of people ask them. And limit the number of the same variety of blooms that you pick. Uh, pick the best three or any one variety, but uh, show many varieties. Um, plan your time to have all of your entries in by the deadline because it'll take longer than you think. So um, make sure that if you are on a crunch that you put the best blooms in first and if you don't get them all in by that time, then you put in the ones that you want right there. All right, it says now it's up for you to show off the best of Savannah's beautiful camellias. Bring your blooms. We do not want you to get to the show and say that you have some prettier blooms than those on the table at home. Uh, it will happen if you don't bring blooms. Showing blooms is so much fun. Try it, you will like it. So, And uh, just to show you who these people are, the lady on the left is uh, Carol Sells. The guy on the right is not Jerry Sells. That was Jerry Conrad, who is no longer, he's judging in the big garden now. But, um, but that was Carol. And then go to the next one. And then Jerry is the one on the left. Um, and, and the lady on the right, that's uh, Rebecca Land Seacrest. That's Hewlin Smith's granddaughter, so she has royal blood in her veins. She decided to make Jerry look better when I was taking Jerry's picture. He jumped in the middle of it, you know. But anyway, that was their program. And for the most part, I think that gives you at least some idea of some of the things that, that they look at when they go in. And I'm going to tell you that uh, if you're in bringing your blooms, you want to watch the exhibitors out here what they're doing. You know, don't get in their way, but watch what they're doing, and you're going to learn an awful lot from them. And when they're finished and they're in helping us do things, don't be afraid to ask them questions. They, you know, ask what they think about this. Uh, they'll, they'll tell you, and you'll learn an awful lot from them. Uh, but everything is subjective. You never know how it's going to turn out. The first time that I ever judged, I was what we call a novice. And the novice goes around in a team of three regular judges. It's so like a judge in training, you know. And they put you with this team, and you're supposed to learn from them how they judge these flowers. And we were in Valdosta, and I was with Stuart Watson. Did you ever know Stuart? Stuart was an attorney from Albany, and he was a fantastic guy. But he judged the team where he would go around with the three and he would say, I think that's one, two, three. I think
think that's one, two, three, and nobody ever dared to ask Stuart a question, you know, whatever. And we were at this table of Ed and the Bass, and Ed and the Bass was winning the shows back then. Had a lot of pretty ones in there, and Stuart said, this is one, this is two, this is three, and the other one nods their head, and he walks off, and I say, can I ask a question? And he just stopped, you know, and he looked at me. I said, Stuart, um, can you explain to me why this one was the, the number one? I would have thought that this one would be number one. And you know, and it got real quiet, because you know, like, wait a minute, he just asked uh, Stuart Watson a question here, and Stuart looks around, looks at it back, he said, you know, he said, I think you're right. He said, I think that is the best, and that's the second best. Guess which one won best loom in the show? Yeah. It would have won no matter which one of those Ed the Bass went up there. It wouldn't have made any difference because the judges at that time were all voting for Ed the Bass for the best bloom in the show, you know. And, uh, but you know, there are differences and it depends on how the judges are gonna do. When I used to run the judging group, the three in Atlanta, they always put me to head up the reticulator group. And I'd have one of the uh, benefactors of the American Camellia Society, she was nice and sweet and she would go along and she'd say, we need to send that to the head table. And I'd say, well, you know, that really doesn't look very good. It's got brown spots all on it. She says, yeah, but you know, the judges expect us to send that up there. And I'd say, okay, send it up there, you know, because that's just how it works. You're gonna find it is all subjective. You know, that's how it works. But, um, but I'd encourage all of you to bring your blooms. If you really feel froggy, you got something good, put it in with the big boys, and if not, put it in the local. And then you might you might win a blue ribbon. You might even win one of the best local awards, the Francis McClanahan Awards, right, Doug? Yes, ma'am. I guess I didn't understand. So if you put the green dot in the local, you don't get judged along with the other ones. You only be judged in the local class, and there'll be like seven awards that are local that you could win. But you're not competing against the others. If you don't put the green dot, then you're going to throw you in with the wolves. Wow. Yeah. What you thinking? Yeah, so it's, like I said, if you feel froggy, go for it. Or if you keep bring one, can you bring like several blooms of the same variety and put one in the local and one in the Absolutely. Yes. You sure can. Okay. You can do that. You're not, it's not an either or. You can put some in both categories. The, the judges that come from out of town can't put some in both categories. Yeah. So that's the good part. Any other questions that you have right now? this. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed their presentation and listening to my big mouth go again. <laughs> there are some refreshments over here, so please have some refreshments, and then also please sign up to help. And if you're, if you're one of our board members, on our group, and you can give us a few minutes before you leave, we would appreciate that. If you have a volunteer to bring refreshments in November, I'll bring some. Okay. Gene, they must have made that just for us since they had that little savannah message. Yes, they did. Really good.